So when we last left the bike share situation two years ago, Meituan had bought Mobike, the bike piles had been mostly cleaned up, and all the other companies had gone out of business. So where are we now? Meituan still has not made any money on bike share. They're only able to support it through the rest of their platform, their ecosystem of delivery, payments, tickets, Airbnb, hotels, all that kind of stuff. Alibaba and Didi have also started up showing off their new bike design, except it's literally exactly the same design. So this means they've either reached peak bike and it just doesn't get any better, or they just didn't want to hire any designers or engineers. It's the second one. Meituan bikes have also been incorporating technology into their bikes in the form of automated announcements that come on when you unlock and lock the bikes. During COVID, they made sure to remind you to be a civilized person and wear a mask, you know, on your bike, away from all other people, outside. When you get off the bike, they make sure to remind you, don't forget any of your stuff. Would be a nice reminder if everyone didn't tune it out because they're so used to the noise pollution everywhere. Anytime something comes through a megaphone, it's just automatically ignored. Clearly they're doing something right though, because New York City has a population density of 26,403 people per square mile. Shenzhen has 23,000 per square mile. New York City Bike, thanks to the data they provide on their website, last June had an average of 114,802 trips per day. That's a lot. Shenzhen is dealing with 1,290,000 rides a day. That is a whole different ballgame, or bike ride. To accommodate that kind of ridership, there needs to be a lot more bikes. And with that number of bikes, there are inevitably not enough places to park them. The sheer number of bikes still amazes me to this day. I'll be walking around, I go around a corner and it's just... In both docked and undocked system, it still requires the movement of bikes from the not popular sparse areas to the more trafficked areas. In places with the docked bike share system like Montreal, New York, Los Angeles, they'll also hire talented data scientists to make sure that the places that they put the docks are strategically located so that the more crowded areas will have more stations spread out so that people will bring bikes from over here to areas that also need bikes. And then there's always spaces available for people who want to park them so that you need to move around bikes much less. In the dockless system, people leave bikes everywhere. The difference in volume of moved bikes is just not even in the same realm. In China, the current version sports a GPS-based locking mechanism that will only allow you to lock the bike if you're standing in a location that it's like a docking station. Unless you pay an extra 5 RMB to have the option to park anywhere. It seems like a great idea to have this option, except it still requires people to park responsibly. Just imagine you have somebody who's riding their bike along and they go, Ah, I'm at where I need to go. There are no locking stations anywhere nearby and I'm in a rush. Well, if they're going to pay the 5 RMB, they're just going to leave the bike there. They're going to get off, they're going to walk away, and it's going to get hit by a car or knocked over or pushed around, and the bike is going to be ruined. But the most frustrating thing about this is there are random locations where, like, this particular station where you want to park the bike, you can't connect. And so you have to walk somewhere else until you have service, but the bike isn't locked yet. So if you get lucky enough that nobody takes your bike while you're walking away, you go to lock the bike only to find that it takes the phone's location, not the bike's location. So by the time you've walked to a place where you have service, you're like, okay, lock. And it's like, would you like to pay five RMB? 
you're not in a place where you can lock the bike. And you're like, no, I, that, screw you. So you have to contact customer service and you're like, hey, lock my bike, lock my bike, lock my bike. And it's like, you have to wait in line to talk to a service agent. And then finally they'll go lock your bike. But then you get a notification that's like, hmm, your bike is not locked in a situation where you're like, please pay us five armed and you're like, most of the time you'll have service and this isn't really an issue, but sometimes the GPS isn't accurate. So like it thinks I'm 10 feet that way and it'll be like, no, but this over here is where the locking station is. You can't park it over there. And I'm like, I'm not over there. Refresh. And then you get annoyed and you start walking away because you biked somewhere that you're trying to be and you want to go to that place. And so because of that, I discovered a hack that I'm going to share with you to make sure that everyone who lives in China who uses Meituan bike and happens to be watching this video will have a nice new hack to get free parking anywhere you want all the time. Step one, unlock the bike as normal. Step two, immediately say, done with my ride and I want to return the bike. The app will check your location and go, yep, you can park here, and then give you the option to confirm. Are you sure you want to park the bike now? Close your phone, put it away, and go on your bike ride. When you finish your bike ride, put the bike anywhere, take your phone out, and push confirm. And just like that, you can park anywhere you want free of charge. App may indicate that you are parked off the coast of Africa. Individual results may vary. Some restrictions apply. Like if your phone force quits the app during your ride. This should not be a loophole. This is just bad programming. But until they fix it, I highly suggest that you use it. This new system has helped prevent bikes from getting stolen. It's also rare to see the smashed QR codes and rubbed off numbers, but it still happens. It's possible that the convenience of the dockless system contributed to the mass adoption of bike share in China. But now that everyone is used to it, it's time we combine the best parts of both systems and make a system that A, doesn't suck, B, doesn't fall apart, and C, doesn't wreck cities. Benefits of the docked bike system. The docked bike system leaves little room for bikes to be left in places for them to get broken. It also means that if someone reports an issue with a bike, the company repairmen know where to find it. In the dockless system, it could be anywhere. This means docked bikes can be more complex and include nice features such as multiple gears. It's also way less common to find parts of bikes just lying around places like you do in China. The main benefit of a docked system, though, is the aesthetics of the city. Having a dedicated space for bikes is always preferable to this. Yes, I recognize that this is scooter share, not bike share, but I'd still like to drive home the point that this episode aired five years ago, and it's still a problem. Even though the convenience of parking anywhere is gone, well, unless you pay the five RMB, the current system allows the company to add new parking spots in software instead of physically building new docks. This means that pretty much anywhere you can park a normal bike, you can also park a bike share bike. Dockless bikes fall over and get hit by cars a lot more often. Therefore, they get fully replaced a lot more often. And I will admit, it is pretty nice to just see a row of brand new bikes and get to be one of the first people to ride it. But it's not that nice when you're riding that bike straight for climate change. Dockless also means that everything is done via your phone rather than these god-awful tower station things. Who thought these were a good idea? The ones in Montreal, half the time the screen doesn't even work so you can't read it and you just have to guess. But my favorite part about the dockless system is that you never have to worry about a station being full. You never have to do that thing where you either wait for someone else to come and take another bike or have to go and figure out where the closest station is and then ride over there instead. There's always space for one more bike, even when there isn't. But as the tester of new tech for the rest of the country, Shenzhen is way ahead of the rest of China. This is as good as it gets. Some of them are struggling. A lot of them aren't even lucky enough to have gotten the new tech, so they're still dealing with the old style of bikes with the manual lock, which means people still leave them everywhere. Chengdu managed to have pandas on every single bike, regardless of which company the bike came from, but still couldn't solve the problem. Bike pools are making a comeback, to an extent. At least it's not as bad as it was before, but 
No one wants their city to look like this. Some cities have barely recovered from the last bike share wave and are already going through it again. Even in Shenzhen, where they are very on top of cleaning up public areas, like to an extreme degree, you still find abandoned bikes, bike parts, and what I like to call back-to-earth bikes. You'll still find petrified remains and ghosts of bike shares past all over the city. This bike's got a lock on it. And no brakes. All that does is turn it into a scooter. This is an Ofo, spray-painted black. Let me just interject here for a little side note. In my last video about this topic, I received an overwhelming number of comments saying something along the lines of, why even bother with bike share? Why not just buy a bike? Let me just draw you a little mental picture. You wake up in the morning and you have no plans for the rest of the day. You're just going to work, that's the day. You take the subway because it's really close to your house. You walk to the subway station, you hop on, you get off, you walk to your office. It's super easy. You're at work and someone says, hey, after work, what do you think about going to this place? So you look up the place. How are you going to get there after work? Well, it's a 45 minute walk. It's an 18 minute drive, but there's a lot of traffic because people are just getting off work. It's a 36 minute bus ride because there's a lot of stops along the way. <sighs> be nice to have a bike because it'd just be a really smooth shot straight over there. It'd probably take you like 12 to 15 minutes. Oh wait, bike share. And now you understand why it's nice to have bike share. But no matter how convenient, no matter how much I use and love the service, after a trip to a Chinese city that doesn't have bike share, I immediately started to notice how much the bike share system ruins the look of the city. This is Dalian, a city in northeast China. One whose main attraction is its mix of European and Chinese architecture. They don't have bike share. The streets looked fantastic. Nothing is blocked off by bike pools. There aren't bikes lying in the bushes. I'll admit that when I reached a situation where I had to take a taxi that was very smoky because the driver was smoking, rather than just taking a quick bike ride because I didn't have access to bike share, I was on the fence. But it's really nice to not have a crappy looking city. This is a bike lane, but there are so many bikes parked here that you have to go around or walk your bike through or lift it over. If any government structure is designed for docked bikes, it's China's. No need for any kind of approval, infinite construction resources, need to build a dock on every street corner for several blocks just to accommodate the number of bikes? Go right ahead. This is China. No problem. If you can manually change the seasons with landscaping, this would be a breeze. Yeah, there's another video coming about that. Just make a standardized bike share dock that does the bare minimum thing of holding a bike in place. Then make all the companies use them. Tell the company they have to either use this dock or not operate in your city. Again, this is the Chinese government. Very easy for them to do. Instead of locking the bike directly through the Meituan or Didi app, just open the app, scan the QR code that's on the dock, and have it go, mm, yep, there's a bike here, Shh, done. Make a factory that mass produces a really easy to set up, standardized, simple bike share dock that detects the presence of a bike and sends a signal to the app when you scan the QR code. Rent the use out to the different bike share companies who will pay you to use the standardized docks. Setting up a new station would be a matter of going, there's a lot of bikes that need to be parked here, but there's too many here. Oh, here's a space and we need more bike space here. So put one down and bikes parked. It doesn't have to be a massive gargantuan steel structure. Like, I don't see the point. It just needs to be able to hold the bike. If it's made of metal and it's screwed into the ground and it has a simple mechanism, it can't be that hard. Then sell that product to North America and Europe and have them use the same one. Make a ton more money. Then maybe the North American docked system can have the kind of usership that it has in China and it will be more worthwhile to use it and then the cities will start putting in bike lanes that make sense!
What the hell is this? Are you kidding? I need to make an entire video about these bike lanes. I don't understand how anyone could possibly think these are a good idea. People literally do die in these things all the time. Why would you think it's a good idea for cars and bikes to ride in the same lane? Why is it you build a massive road and then a place for people to walk in a tiny little space along the side? Oh, and I guess bikes can go on the road too. This is not a good idea. Hold on, I need to go make a video about this.